Hey, welcome back everyone. Um, and yeah, uh, today was haircut day. <laughs> so, um, yeah, hopefully all the unexpected repairs and bozo incidents are behind us and we can make some good progress on uh, reassembling the shaper. Uh, the first thing we got to do is uh, probably get the ram on and the uh, and the entire shaper assembly back on its stand. So we'll attack that first. And as usual, I'm sure I've got way too much detail filmed, so I'll try to fast forward where we can to kind of move things along. So, anyways, thanks again for uh, stopping by, and let's have at it. We're getting ready to pre-assemble the ram, and. You got to do it in the right sequence and I'm trying to remember how everything goes and I'm looking at the uh, cheat sheet and so forth. So the first thing we got to do is get the drive screw mechanism in here. Um, we got this bevel gear. This is the first thing that's got to go in. It goes in here and I made some new washers for this one and also for this one and um, we can cut away and uh, look at how we made those um, but before we do that so these are the originals the originals uh, this is some kind of weird cardboard maybe bakelite fiber material I didn't have anything like this and honestly I have no idea what it is um, so I made them out of brass and their function is it keeps the Zamac gear from you know rubbing directly on the cast iron surface that's on the other side. So I figured that ah, brass will probably be fine. And these are the same thickness. I you know I mic'd them out. They don't look like it, but they're actually the same. So let me get that going first. Actually, let's cut away. Let's cut away. I'll show you how we made these, and then we'll come back. Got a block of aluminum here. Already did some just a uh, really rough layout because I'm going to clamp this between two blocks of aluminum and we'll drill and then uh, uh, with an end mill we'll probably just uh, punch a 5 8 hole and then I've got to figure out how to get these little side slots. I think we'll just do that with a small end mill also. So. Looks like it did a pretty good job. But now we got to make them round. So I've got this mandrel I made for another project. I'm just going to re machine it, modify it, turn this down to 5 8 thread it, and uh, put a little shoulder on there. And uh, we will do that. So let's go over to the lathe and make that. So after we get that in, then the next thing that goes in is this adjusting screw. And this is a little tricky because it threads through the, the drive yoke here. And you've got to assemble them together. And then at the same time, the drive yoke goes into the lever arm. And you cannot get this pin installed. <laughs> once it's inside the ram so it all has to go in in the right sequence um, so hopefully we only we only have to do this once okay here we go
just doing a little dress rehearsal here guys so here's the adjusting lead screw the drive yoke here's our gear our washer and a spacer okay now you can't pre-assemble this there's no way you can get it in because this gear has to go on the other side of that gear so that's got to go in here first all right and then you need to thread this in I had to go back and look at my photos to see which direction this yoke goes it could actually I think it could go either way I was looking at the little oiler here in my photos and it points toward the, uh, the clapper box so there is a counter bore on this side because it's not they didn't want to thread the, that whole thickness for obvious reasons so and th there's enough thread it could actually go either way but I'm just trying to keep everything the same okay let me run this in a little bit Okay, so we're through the gear, through the washer, through the spacer, and then you got to line up your, I don't know if you can see that or not, there's a, uh, there's a pin that goes through the gear. Okay, like that. Alright, can you guys see that? Let me get you in closer. There we go. So you got, uh, yeah, you got to line up this pin, spacer, washer, and you got to be on the other side of that gear okay with the trunnion and then also on final assembly you've got to have the lever arm in there so this is going to be fun we got that in there and centered my other thought was to double up on these set screws but there's just not enough thread depth to do that so i think this is the way to go i guess you could loctite it also Okay, now for the fun part. All right. So next thing I gotta do is get that pin started. Okay, so yeah, that pin is not a tapered pin and you know, it's got it had that curve to it. Probably should have straightened it a little bit. We did shave off a little bit of Zamac <laughs> out of the bore driving that in. So I don't think that'll hurt anything. And then uh, we're not a hundred percent centered on the pin, but I don't want to go any farther. It's it's in there nice and tight. So we're gonna leave well enough alone. We got this laid on its side here, so we can get to the bottom. So I've got the swing link ready to go here. Locks down to this shaft with this set screw and, and lock nut here. I don't want to do that until we've got everything lined up for obvious reasons. Uh, look at this, here's our, our pin. You can't, <laughs> you can't get this pin in, but if we swing out here, then we got just enough room to get the pin in. So I think we'll be okay. Otherwise we've got to take this back out of there again. before doing anything else. Because you can't do it when it's inside. Swing this in. Okay, there we go. Slide her up from the bottom. Got this drive block. All right, we'll go that way. 
I don't think it makes any difference. Be a lot easier if I had a pulley on here. <laughs> so I'm probably going to pull these um, hold down plates off one more time. Uh, we can do that anytime because I would like to do oil flaking on the back side of those, but, but I want to do some practicing <laughs> first. I don't want to practice on the on the actual piece. Okay, how are we doing there, Ethan? Good. Are we high enough? No. And go forward. Down a little bit. Down. Oh, wait a minute. Don't we have to hook that cable on? Uh -huh. Let's hook the strap on. Okay. Alright, now we got to check the balance. I got everything ready to install the cross rail. I got everything oiled up. I got a couple blocks here. I got the nut set at the right height. Our clamp rails, shims, bolts. Okay, so let's see if we can do this without dropping everything. I think I can slip the give in. Afterwards, I'm hoping. All right, let me uh, let me find the gib and we'll put that in. I got the gibs adjusted off camera. I just ran them down so they touched, just backed off a tiny bit and locked them down. Um, probably, well, definitely we'll be revisiting those just to make sure we're happy with the tightness and the clearance and all that. So now I'm just going to get all these snugged down and uh, see how easily the, uh, the cross support moves. Or doesn't move okay so hold on to your seats guys this may be a bit of a shock but uh, you'd be surprised what you can learn by reading the literature <laughs> uh, so the knee uh, no play should be allowed in the slides of the knee the clamping plates should be adjusted so that the knee slides will be rigid when the eight screws are tightened okay so it's not meant to move which makes total sense because, uh, yeah, I mean, once you're once you're set, you don't. You, there's no reason to raise or lower the table or the knee, you know, during your uh, cutting milling operation. So yeah, so we're good. All right, we're gonna put in our lead screw for the cross uh, uh, crossway. Um, not sure if I showed making this uh, new nut. Uh, if I didn't, we'll cut away and, uh, and have a look at that right now. But uh, I'm just going to, you know, this has to go in at the same time. Got a couple washers going in the end, a couple lock nuts. So, all right, well, I'm putting this in. Have a look at how we made this. Alrighty, so we're back. So nothing rocket science here. Um, what I do need to do is get rid of any backlash end play without getting it too tight okay that's really good I, have, I don't feel any end play and this can be adjusted afterwards so we don't get uh, too excited and leave out a step I want to get our table foot in here before we put the table in because 
this thing is pretty long and I don't think you could get it in there once the table's installed on the uh, on the shaper. Okay, I like that. All right, I think I'm ready. I think I got everything staged here. I still got the other one to put on underneath, and there's a gib that goes underneath. I'm going to do those bottom ones off camera. My battery's just about dead here anyways. Alright, I'm uh, putting in this set screw while I'm thinking about it so I don't forget for our cross rail um, nut that's back behind there. And there is access through the bottom here to get an Allen wrench in there. Okay, so I need both hands to do that. So I just wanted to show you where that was at. Okay, I did a few things off camera, guys. So I, I put this uh, step shiv or step pulley, either description is correct, um, and the grease cup. The, the, um, I did pre charge, pre fill the, uh, the grease passageways, but everything is just so open and free right now. The, it, you, just, you run the cap down and the grease just goes right in. So I just ran it all the way down just so it has something to bear against. Uh, we put in our way wipers. We got those on all the way around. That's done. We got our other grease cap on over here, and same issue there. Um, you know, everything is just flowing free, so really no resistance when you tighten the grease cap up. So um, I've got it pre-charged, but uh, yeah, we don't. We can't get any tension on it really. So hopefully. Hopefully that'll behave itself and not fall off. Okay, we got our housing on and tightened. And you can clock that any way you want, but I wanted it vertical. <laughs> and I think that's how it's gotta go, it's vertical. They don't have any type of uh, locating pins or anything to uh, restrict it from, from you know, any particular direction. Okay, our little lock nut here. There's a uh, there's some type of a soft metal slug in there. This is the one that they tell you you can adjust your bearing preload with. I don't know about that. Okay, so one thing I don't want to forget, you got to get your T-nut in before you put that other housing cover on. So make sure you guys remind me, don't let me forget that. So I didn't do a thorough cleaning on this because uh, I didn't want to soak it in solvent because we got a, a centered uh, oil light bearing in here and you, you don't want to wash the oil out of it. Just keeps getting better. <laughs> so we got another puzzle to figure out. So I'm getting ready to put the uh, the ratchet mechanism on here, and you can see it's got dowel pins, so it dowels in here. Let's see if I can get the gear to engage. There we go. All right, so that 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 can't rotate because it's doweled in. All right. Now back here is the anchor for this linkage rod. Okay, and then that linkage rod, it ties into the back of our 
of our gear drive housing here, or feed housing. So the reason they have this linkage is so as you raise the knee up and down, this linkage will cause this housing to swing, to rotate a little bit. And right now, it's solid. When we put that um, clamp ring in there, it locked this down solid. So that's not going to work. And then I was just looking at this guy. So this lines up fine. So we're okay there. But I've got to figure this out because, uh, you know, you've got to be able to raise the knee up and down. And right now, it's, it's going to lock everything up without this being able to swivel. So, wow. Okay, all right. Um, oh, and I did put some grease on those gears. I, I know you guys are screaming at me. Hey, you forgot to put lube on those gears. Okay, I did that. <laughs> all right, I'm going to take this back apart. I looked at the exploded view, and we got everything in the way it's supposed to go, but something's not right. I'm using a different camera for this shot, so hopefully it looks okay. All right, so I'm doing some redneck engineering logic here trying to figure out why our housing is not free to swing here. And I was originally thinking, well, maybe you have to just loosen these screws up a little bit so that it can, you know, have some uh, room to swing. And that just doesn't make any sense. Why would they engineer it like that? And then looking at the parts, uh, uh, manual they call this a bearing plate okay that makes total sense you know because it's uh, functioning kind of like a bearing in there all right so what I did um, is I went through and I uh, I miked our thickness here I also lapped everything right this I put this on a lapping plate lapped it made sure there was no burrs came in here with some wet and dry and uh, you know you made sure everything was clean, no burrs. This little ejection pin mark, that's subsurface, so that's not causing a problem. All right, so I miked our ring here all the way around, okay? And then I also came in with a depth gauge, and I miked this um, shoulder all the way around. And what I ended up with, so the housing, I took several measurements, averaged them, same on the on the bearing shoulder or the boss shoulder here and they come out to the exact same number okay so um, it should be I'm guessing maybe a thousandth clearance so we can't do anything with this and it needs to be longer anyways well I guess you could take this back a little bit <laughs> we're not touching that okay so I think I'm going to take a little off our our housing ring here just to give us a thousandths clearance. I can't, I don't know how this was working. Um, the, um, and I didn't try to run this machine at all. Um, everything was kind of locked up, you know, when we were doing the disassembly. So I don't think this was actually swinging and free to move ever <laughs> i don't i don't see how it could have been unless they left these screws loose so anyways that's what i'm going to do i'm going to put this over in the mill and we're just going to dust this off a little bit and then i'll put it back on the lapping plate just to kind of clean it a little bit and then uh, see what we get so after quite a few sessions of milling filing and a whole lot of lapping Finally got our clearance right, and uh, I'll put the plate on in a second so that this guy will actually swivel as required once everything's, once that plate is in there and tightened. Let me do that. All right, got all our screws back in, everything tightened down, and so much better. There's just a tiny bit, actually you can't even hardly feel it. Of, uh, of movement there and just a little bit of drag but uh, it's swinging freely like it's supposed to so
All right, I'm going to put all this back together and uh, we're going to go back to our other camera also. It's finally charged up, so let me get that done. We're back to where we were about a day ago and we're back to our regular camera. So we got one linkage arm left to put on here. I went ahead and put the ratchet mechanism on. Okay. All right, well, we don't have a motor yet. <laughs> But uh, we can turn it by hand here. Okay, that looks like it's working. Let's engage our ratchet. Motor bracket time! You know it's a good day when you have to go to the spare bedroom to retrieve the parts that you worked on almost four months ago. Okay, let's get this on there. Several months ago when uh, I rebuilt this counter shaft drive assembly. I didn't have the new seals. So now we're gonna we're gonna take this pulley off, just the set screw, and this collar, pull the shaft back out and uh, see what we need to do to put these seals in. Seal. I don't know what they use for glue, but whatever it is, it's pretty good, man. It is stuck on there. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Ah, it's not glued. <laughs> Just sitting in there. Yeah, I was getting all ready to <laughs> to glue it on. Well, not necessary. So this old seal, it's pretty hard. I don't know, should I put a little glue on there? Let me clean this off a little better. All right, we're gonna try the contact cement. I don't know if that's the right way to do it, but that's how we're doing it. Okay, let me uh, get the other one ready. Much better. All right, do we have any mechanical engineers uh, watching this? Let me know what you think. So I've always been at the mindset and also others that I've worked with, you never put two set screws opposite of each other. You go 90 degrees if you're gonna run two set screws, okay? Alright, well, I think we're ready to go back on. Let's see if we can get this on here without dropping anything on the floor. Okay, I'm just going to leave these snug and uh, I've got to check the alignment of our shivs, make sure everything's matching up. And then we'll probably end up having to do some adjusting anyways for the um, 
belt tension. Man, getting this drive belt tension right turned out to be quite fiddly, but uh, finally got it where I think it's going to be good. It doesn't take much of an adjustment here on the on our bracket to make a you know significant change in the belt tension. So I'm prepping our new power cord for the motor. The uh, first thing I did was remove the cancer causing label because uh, I don't want to get cancer by plugging in this power cord. And uh, I will make sure that I wash my hands when I'm done handling it. Alright, let me zoom you guys in and uh, show you what we're doing on our hookup here. I got one side of the switch leg landed. The other one here needs to splice and I'm just going to use a crimp cap. It's a tight spot, so I don't want to use a wire nut in there. This is much better. Well, there's how everything lays in there. It's tight, but uh, we've got nothing pinching or severely rubbing, so I think we're going to be good. There's, there's room back in here, so that cap is fine laying right there where it is. All right, let me put the cover on. All trimmed off and cleaned up. I think that looks a lot better. Uh, did I mention I had to order a different belt? Yeah, the new belt that we had is too long, so I've got the correct one on its way. Okay, guys, this is important, so pay attention 007. <laughs> um, I'm not a shaper expert, and this is my first shaper, but I kind of figured this out just through common sense. So what we have here, we have a, a, a transfer gear that comes off the main crankshaft with a T-slot, and it's the crank that drives the ratchet mechanism for the feed, okay? Now, um, we know that we want our feed to feed only on the back stroke and not feed on the cutting stroke. So looking at this ratchet mechanism here, we're going to switch it from left to right. Let's start out with left. Okay, and this, this is going to be driven by the linkage rod here, and the amount that it drives depends on how much offset you put on this T-nut. Okay, so when the way this is configured now, it's ratcheting when it's moving forward. So that as this turns and the, and the linkage pushes forward, it's going to ratchet. When it comes back and drives the other way, you can see now it's it's driving our feed, okay, and then next stroke it'll ratchet, okay. Now if we flip our lever here, it's exactly the opposite. Now it'll, it feeds on the forward motion here, ratchets on the back, okay. All right, so the important thing here is that um, the end of our stroke of our linkage rod has to be at its extreme um, rear position or extreme forward position depending on whether you're going right or left okay so what that means this slot you can go either side of center all right so that allows you to adjust for whichever direction that you happen to be feeding okay but the angle of this slot is important Okay, so the kind of the center of the range here is, is somewhere in there. All right, so this slot should be lining up this way when a ram is either all the way back or all the way forward. And you can see we're not, we're not properly lined up. So what that means, I need to take this back off, reposition it, um, find a different gear tooth engagement that will line this slot up so that we are in, in alignment here. That way we can get our feed to be completely done feeding at the, at the back of our stroke and not feeding on the front stroke, if that makes sense, right? <laughs> so you got to get this lined up. And I'm curious if there's any timing marks. I didn't, I didn't notice any. I've looked in the manual that I have. There's absolutely nothing mentioned 
I've looked online. There's n almost nothing online regarding this timing setup. Um, I did find one uh, blog where guys were talking about it and trying to figure it out. Uh, but it's real and it's something you got to pay attention to. So let me take this apart and re-align um, that and then we'll see how this thing functions. All right, I repositioned the gear. I think I got it right. So let's see what happens here. Ram is all the way back, okay? And I'm gonna feed, this is the proper feed or, or operating direction. Ram's moving forward. Our linkage rod is trying to drive the, uh, the cross feed, but here it ratcheting it, so it's not driving. There's a little bit of backlash that gets taken up. Okay, Ram's fully extended. Okay, it's starting its backstroke, and now our feed is feeding. Okay, we're coming up to the end of our backstroke. Right there is the maximum backstroke, and notice that slot is lined up with our, our linkage rod. Okay, keep going one more cycle here. Okay, now we're, we're in the cutting direction, we're feeding. Our ratchet is ratcheting. We finish the cut. And we're coming back, and now we are feeding again. Okay. I did look carefully at these gears. There are no timing marks. You just have to figure this out when you're doing the assembly here. Something like that. I'm going to check the length of these screws, make sure they're not too long. Wow, there's not any extra clearance. Alright, we ground about one thread off of these. So, got a little bit of a safety factor now. Okay, like I say, we got to tram this vise in, so we're just running them down. Okay, good enough for now.